So, my turn for my top three games of the year for 2022. And I'll be honest, I didn't get the chance to play a lot of games this year. Having a son kind of takes up a lot of your time, especially when you're also trying to get other videos done. And I started retrospectives this year, so I was doing a lot of research. But I did squeeze in time for about 10 games, and I'll be honest, my top game probably would have been my top game no matter what. I could have played a bunch of other games. There were made, may have been a few that could challenge it, but no. <laughs> this was always going to be my number one, I have a feeling, and I think you know what it's going to be if you know me. But what about my others? What about my top three? So let's go ahead and start with number three. Pokemon Legends Arceus, which honestly, in some ways, I kind of forgot about that it came out this year because it came out in February. Plus, we just got Scarlet and Violet, and it really does show a shift for Pokemon, really trying new things and having two kind of open world Pokemon games, less so with Pokemon Legends, but having them having them play so differently. And Legends has more of, a, more of an action bent, where you're able to just toss a Pokeball and catch the Pokemon. How you're able to have these, I guess, in the moment battles uh, and, and type things. And honestly, just breaking up the structure. It feels very different for a Pokemon game. And it, it works. It, it's a lot of fun. It really just sucked me in and got me interested in the world of Hisui. And there was just something naturally fun about going through and tossing a Pokeball, catching, to tossing a Pokeball, catching, or having a Pokemon outright try to kill you and have all the people of the town tell you that, yeah, these Pokemon will kill you. It'd be very careful. It's very dangerous out there. That kind of sticks with you. And who knows? Maybe Pokemon Scarlet and Violet could have supplanted this. I've only played up until the first town. So what I played is a lot of fun, but it's just not enough to form any kind of best of the year type thing. It is just inherently different plus there's all the other issues that it has but from everything i hear if you play it and beat it and get through it it's really really good i just haven't yet but i have played pokemon legends and yeah people were talking about it it was all over the place it felt like a almost like a renaissance especially after how the sino remakes went this this was better but yeah and just in the end uh legends kind of carried me through and there was some really great stuff by the end and I just enjoyed the ex entire experience it was something different it's not completely open world but definitely with each of its sections and how much there was to explore and just do I had a, a really good time and I, I think it just earns its spot at number three at least for me personally number two uh, ended up being Kirby and the Forgotten Land and it's Kirby in 3D and it's done so well. And you know the thing that really just edged it over above anything else to make it one of those standout games? The boss fights and the combat. The fact that Kirby has this dodge move that they really don't emphasize at all. But if you do it, if you dodge at the last minute, you get this slowdown and ability to counterattack and do some massive damage. It feels amazing. I loved going through and fighting all the bosses and really taking it on and, and seeing how much I can challenge myself. And there's some really tough moments there, especially if you don't use the stuff that uh, that powers up your speed and attack. In retrospect, I probably could have beaten the final go of things a lot easier if I had just used those, but I didn't think about it, so I didn't use them and I went through the hard way. But hey, I still beat it and Kirby in 3D works. It's, you know, not too revolutionary. It's still Kirby, but the way they had to think about certain things as far as how powers would work did really just impress me. Uh, it's a very thoughtful game, and the great thing is this feels like the return to Return to Dreamland, where Return to Dreamland brought us back to basics for Kirby. It had been a while since we've had a traditional Kirby, and it had a new idea, but it was mainly mainly just, hey, here's this thing again that you like, and there you go. It's fine. Not my favorite, but it's a good Kirby game. But then we got Triple Deluxe and Planet Robobot, where they took that concept and just made it better and better. And that's what I'm looking forward to. I really think this is a good building block and starting place for future Kirby games. because And even just this 
base right here is really good. They keep that combat. They come up with some fun new powers. Maybe bring some other powers that weren't in this game that haven't been in 3D into 3D and figure out how to work, make those work. This could be a really fun time. I actually also got to play the two-player mode with Amy this year as she went through it, and I enjoyed it, but playing as Waddle D or Bandana D, um, you lose track of yourself a lot, and I think the finer points of the combat kind of loses themselves. I had a lot more difficulty doing the dodges and uh, really counterattacking. Still had a ton of fun playing with Amy, but I, I think the nuance is a bit lost in two-player mode, so I actually... Unless you just really want to play with a friend and just goof around, I mean, absolutely worth it. But I do think it shines a little bit more in single player, at least personally. But yeah, just fantastic game out of nowhere. Great final boss. Great bits here and there that just really get, brings you in. I 100%ed the game. I, I, I couldn't not. It was just that enjoyable. And I'm looking forward to what they do next. I know we got Return to, Re to Dreamland Redux or whatever coming next year but I'm more interested in the next 3D Kirby game. So, finally happened, turned out really good, huzzah. So, number one. I haven't finished the game yet, but I have sunk more time into this game than any other game this year, and I think I'm sitting at around 80 hours, 75 hours, somewhere around there. It's Xenoblade Chronicles 3. I didn't get the chance to uh, review it or play it early, and it's so long, and I just wanted to just take the time to immerse myself in this world, see what it had to offer, and let it open up to me. And that's really what's happened here. The characters are fantastic. The plot so far has been really interest intriguing, with so many little hints here and there that just I, I can't wait to see the answers to. For clarification, I'm in chapter five, in the wide open sea area, uh, just to kind of give context there. And I've started doing some ascended quests for the heroes, and those are really, really good. I am just sucked in every time I play. It is so much fun to just explore and fill out that map and see what you can find and find those places that you can't quite go to yet, but you level up and you come back and you can get through it and you can see all these really cool things. Everything about Zeno that you loved before is here and I'm still enjoying it. And this might be the best battle system the series has ever had. It's uh, unique, it's interesting, it's honestly kind of simple compared to what other ones. You have so much customization when it comes to all these roles that you can change between. It's fun to just fill them out. There's just so much to do and enjoy and I'm gonna be playing it for a while still. I, I can't wait to actually get through it but I I can't imagine this disappointing me like unless the ending is truly botched which from everything I hear is not the case so I don't really have to worry about that but I, I can't imagine any other game really supplanting this uh, from what I played. I know there's some other major games that came out this year that might have challenged it, like your Elden Rings, your uh, Live Alives, your Horizon, God of War, what have you, but I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Xenoblade fan, and having I, I, can, I thought Xenoblade 2 was more game of the year than uh, Breath of the Wild. I enjoyed it that much, and so there is very little in my mind that could have three beaten be beaten by anything else. And yeah, it's just a good time. It's really good. And I'm, I hopefully get a chance to give my full thoughts on it once I actually beat it. But um, yeah, yeah, this is a good game and I am excited to see how it all comes to an end. But yeah, I, it's just some of the most fun I've had this year. Uh, just to break down the other games that I did play uh, and didn't, you know, make the list, uh, make them a top three. Uh, Splatoon 3 was the qu uh, closest. Great, great single player, but I just don't have the time for the multiplayer. But everything about it is fantastic. I'm just more of a single player gamer at this point. And uh, while Splatoon 3's single player was a lot of fun, love the final boss, just, you know, Pokemon Legends just felt a bit more unique to pull me in in that way. Otherwise, um, Shredder's Revenge, great time. Uh, we also had, I also played Mario Strikers, which is honestly just kind of forgettable. Klonoa, 
Great underrated series you should check out, Kirby's Dream Buffet, which is just plain fun. Soul Hikers 2, fun RPG that kind of misses the mark uh, in, a, in a couple of ways, but I still say it's mostly enjoyable. And Pac-Man World Repack, which is just a, a fun remake. So yeah, the top three of my games just kind of stood out above all the others in a lot of major ways. But uh, yeah, so that's my uh, top games of the year. Uh, looking forward to what all of you think, uh, feel that your Game of the Years are, and honestly, looking forward to seeing what uh, all my fellow GVG members think as their Game of the Year. So thank you so much for watching, and of course, if you want to support us even for further, you can check out our Patreon over at patreon.com slash gvgaming, or just hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, what have you. We enjoy it and appreciate your support and hope you have a wonderful uh, rest of your 2022 and look forward to 2023. Till next time, guys. Bye.